Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy with Seattle Makers, and we are diverting all of our resources to make medical uh, supplies for local area hospitals, also for grocery store clerks, um, aid workers, um, things like that. So taking a quick break to talk about how we set up the place safely so that people can work together and produce these things without um, coming in contact with the virus. We're operating under the assumption that everybody is, is sick and covered with the disease uh, coming in the door. So that's a great first conversation to have with people. Um, greet them at the door, uh, talk to them, have that conversation. Like we're, we're all, your hands, your face are already contaminated. Um, and then we have a clean area and a dirty area. So outside is considered dirty and then inside the door, it's all sterile and we're operating it like a uh, laboratory or research facility. Um, everything inside that door needs to be sanitary. Uh, we spray it down with 70% uh, alcohol at least, or 91 is what we have. You can dilute that a little bit. It has to be above 60% to be effective. When people get here, they wash hands first for 20 seconds. Uh, wash in between the fingers, on top, under the fingernails, and up the wrist a couple of inches. Um, dry thoroughly, then put on gloves. Next, you put on a face mask and bend the wire in the face mask at the top to fit the top of your nose. The first band goes behind your neck. The top band goes above your head. So it'll go on like that. Next, we do a face mask, which these are the prototypes that we're making. So. That goes on next, and my hands are contaminated, so now I would either spray or hand sanitizer, or you can even wash with gloves on. We also have everyone wash and dry during breaks and do any eating and uh, any breaks outside of the facility. And if somebody has some stuff to bring in to use in the space, we bring it just inside the door and we'll spray it down with, um, with a fine mist of the alcohol to sanitize it. And you want to make sure it doesn't just get the top. You want to get both sides of everything. So you might need to turn places over to actually spray it and, and get on that. If you see someone else touch their face or their mask, the moment you put that mask on, that's contaminated. So um, if you adjust it or touch it at all, then you've got to re-sanitize your hands. If you see that and you normalize, like calling out like, oh, you just touched your, your face, and then even offer the sanitizer, or to, to spray your hands. Um, it's going to create a culture where people just are automatically um, you know, interrupting any chance of contamination. We've also eliminated any door handle touching. So our information to how to do that is on our website at seattlemakers.org uh, to make hands-free um, door openers. And you're going to need to take a standard Home Depot bracket and bend the corner. We just put it in a vise and hammered the top. Um, we lined it up with the first hole and just hammered it forward. Um, from there, you can uh, grind out little grip, grip holes. This isn't 100% necessary, but it does make it a lot easier for your shoe to grip. For these models, you're going to need to drill out larger holes into the bracket so that screws will fit in. Uh, we use number 10 screws. And we made sure that the screws were just short to not punch through the door. Um, and you're going to want to use button head screws instead of uh, the pan head that are, that are tapered so that it, it secures it um, in the best way. So for our building, it's an older building, but um, we have enough room in between the door to put a magnet. And what we used is a, um, a name tag magnet. They're really strong. They can stick to the top and bottom metal and actually push in the, um, the latch and secure it. And that doesn't interfere with the door when it closes. So um, at that point, you can just push it open and push it closed. And you want to put big clear signage and even tape or something to obscure the natural or to block the, the natural action of grabbing that handle and, and opening. Also, if you have any elevators or um, doorbells, put up big signs that say, um, use elbows and you can even put 
put this over uh we didn't we didn't do this yet but but you can put this over the tape and it'll be a little bit confusing at first but you can like circle the button um it'll definitely interrupt the natural behavior and have people just hit that with their elbow you also want to have uh, plenty of hand sanitizer and sprayable ethanol on hand um, at the end of the day bleach is going to be the best sanitizer so mix up one of those brand new each day they do go bad especially if they're left in sunlight and in transparent um, containers so uv will break it down more quickly you want to mix up a new batch every day um, and spray down all work surfaces to, to bleach them at the end of the day when people leave and they leave their mask um, you want to spray that down as well there are going to be a lot of people who exhibit some symptoms of being sick who may want to help um, it is allergy season cold and flu season and also it takes five days sometimes for um, symptoms to show up so there's a lot of uncertainty there the key here is to Get clear on what symptoms people have. If they match the coronavirus, send them home. And check out the, the CDC website, um, cdc.gov, to, uh, to really get familiar with all of those symptoms. Do your best. Stay safe. And if you have any questions, you can send them to jeremy at seattlemakers.org. Thanks.